Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. It's Transfiguration of Our Lord Sunday. Um, also, happy Valentine's Day <laughs> to, to everyone. Um, uh, just uh, again, if you're joining us for the first time, Trinity Lutheran Church in North Branch, Minnesota, I'm Pastor John. Uh, just a couple announcements to bring to your attention. Uh, uh, first and, and most important is Lent, uh, as most of you know, begins this Wednesday. And uh, since we are not having in-person worship services yet, we actually have kind of Lenten packets for you all that includes ashes that, that you can, um, with your family or, or by yourself, uh, impose on your foreheads for the service. And that service is going to be available at 6 a.m. in the morning. So if you want to watch it in the morning, afternoon, evening, that'll be available. But the, the packets themselves, they'll be in bins outside of door 6 and door 12 here at church. Um, on Monday through Wednesday from uh, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if you just want to swing by, uh, you can just grab a packet out of the, out of the, the bin. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that being able to have the ashes uh, can help us connect just a little bit more with the Lenten season. Um, also, if you're watching this and it's before 11 o'clock, just a reminder, the annual meeting is at 11. Uh, sign in at 1030 if you can. Uh, so we can make sure we get everybody there and signed in. And uh, yeah, so I, hopefully everything goes well. And okay, I think that's all I have to share. So let's take a couple moments and prepare ourselves for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin our own sins and the broken systems that bind us, we turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away. We are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. So now we have our first song, and it's Be Thou My Vision led by Barb Moore.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now our scripture reading comes from 2 Corinthians, and it's read by Emily Darst. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3-6 through six. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Transfiguration Sunday is where we witness kind of this divine changing of Jesus' appearance, this kind of earthly symbol of of his holiness, of his status as the son of God. And it says his robes became dazzling white. I mean, it kind of sounds like a Tide ad, right? (laughs) I I think it was last year at the Super Bowl where they did the white Tide ad thing. You can look it up. If you want, but there's this there's this change, and 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 the, the disciples are are overwhelmed. They're fearful. They're they're worshipful, and it just seems that like it's this amazing experience where maybe their eyes are fully opened to who Jesus is, simply by this change in appearance, this kind of illumination of him. As most of you know, throughout our lives, our appearance changes. You know, from baby to teenager, we go through growth spurts and, 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 and all sorts of different changes. And then, unfortunately, it seems like year after year, there's changes that maybe aren't the best in terms of our appearance or our health or ability to do what we love to do. You know, I remember when I was in seminary, I'd, I'd spent oh, probably five or six years with this intense battle over my receding hairline. You know, it was, it was those times where you would take a shower and get, I would get my hair just right, and, and it, I had to use a bunch of product to make sure it laid correctly in, in all these places to cover up the fact that my hair was losing, and when it was windy outside, I wouldn't want to go outside, <laughs> and I never wanted to wear a hat because what if I had to take it off and, and, and things like that, and it just got to the point where I'm like, you know what, enough is enough, and so I was talking to some of my 
classmates and said, you know what, I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna start busting my hair. And they all kind of looked at me like, what, really? And so I went into my dorm room, took out the clippers, did a big strip <laughs> down the middle and was like, well, <laughs> I guess we're doing this. You can't, can't go back, can't stop now. But I have to say, I am glad that I started to do that because all that fear, all that worry, all that anxiety about what I looked like just kind of went away. And I was just like, well, here's who I am. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else to hide. You know, I think a lot of times we, we think so much about what we look like, our appearance to others. And so for me, transfiguration ties in so well with Ash Wednesday coming up because it's all, it's all about kind of appearance and how we look towards others. And this appearance change that, that Jesus has, this illumination, it, it doesn't change who Jesus is. But it changes what his disciples think of him. Or at least it makes it clear who he is. And of course, Peter, or it should make it clear, Peter kind of flubs it up a little bit here. He says, well, let's, uh, you know, there's, there was three of you, let's make dwelling places for, for all of you, and, and let's hang out. Because, <laughs> again, he, he kind of seems to be the, the nervous babbler here. He doesn't know what's going on, but then a cloud appears, covers them, and a voice comes from the cloud. And it says, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to him. Those same word God speaks to us today. Listen to Jesus. When Jesus does the Sermon on the Mount, he talks about blessing for those whom we wouldn't normally see as blessed. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus talks about loving and serving those who, who may even be considered your enemy. Jesus teaches us not to worry, that God takes care of us. He teaches us not to consider what other people think. To not try and just simply show the best of ourselves, but to be honest and vulnerable with each other. I have to say, I think that's one of the things I've appreciated the most you know, in, in, in serving as a pastor is, is when people are willing to kind of go to the places that aren't so pretty, that are a little messy, and share some of the mistakes or some of the, some of the hardships or some of the sufferings that they've gone through because it creates, I think, a deeper connection between those we're willing to share that with. This is my son whom I love Listen to him. There's so many other voices in the world today that we listen to, isn't there? Voices about money, power, looks, social standing, you know, how to vote. All of these other voices seem to take precedence at different times over the voice of Jesus. We listen to Jesus when he says, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Be kind and serve those who are different. But I think maybe the the thing that Jesus says or speaks to us that maybe we have the hardest time listening to 
is those words, you are forgiven. Sometimes those words are hard to expect, accept or, or, or maybe appear too good to be true, and they are too good. But God wants the best for you and for me. And so when Jesus speaks these words to you, I love you, you're forgiven, I've prepared a place for you. We listen to him. Because when we hear those words, when those words kind of saturate us to the core, hope never fades. Love never dwindles. Goodness and kindness reign supreme. So today, again, I ask you to hear those words of the gospel. You are saved by grace. You are loved and forgiven exactly where you are. And that changes us. Amen. Well, now we have special music. It's Beautiful Savior, and it's sung by our Tyler Olson. Well, together with all the faithful gathered around the world, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You know, I have to say, I, I can't wait to do some of these communal things with people here because I feel like my cadence is totally off from how it would be with, with all of you here. But I'm sure it's like riding a bike. We'll get back to it. So, Well, on this last Sunday after Epiphany, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need. O God of light, we pray for communities of faith around the globe, for our own congregation, for our pastor, and for all Christians who cannot gather for communal worship. Show us your face in the darkness. Speak your word of power to all the faithful. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O morning star, we pray for the earth, for life forming in the dark earth and ocean depths, for creatures seen and unseen, and especially for the animals who require cold and ice. Give us your spirit's guidance for our stewardship of the planet. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O Son of Righteousness, we pray for our nation's elected leaders, for attorneys and juries, and for all who work for justice in our land. Give to them all integrity and service and courage to choose what is right. We pray for our citizenry, that prejudice cease, that resentment about the election wane, and that violence be averted. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. Beautiful Savior, we pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for medical workers, and for all who await the vaccine. We pray for those enduring famine, for those experiencing homelessness, for the people of Yemen, and for all who live in war zones. We pray for all who are ill and for all who receive no medical care. Heal them with your loving might. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. Love divine, we pray for those who, especially on this Valentine's Day, feel lonely, for those who are abandoned, and for those who must live apart from their dear ones, especially from the children separated from their parents at our nation's border. Embrace all who are alone with your care. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. We remember before you all who have died in the faith, especially the missionaries Cyril and Methodius and the reformer Martin Luther, and for all who's, who we name here before you in our hearts. Be with us in our every darkness, until at our end we join with the saints in your everlasting light. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O Holy Trinity, light creator, light of light begotten, and light revealer, receive our praise and hear our prayers for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, now we'll have communion again, so please get the elements ready if you have them, if you have not done so, uh, and we'll have communion together. In the night in which he betrayed our Lord Jesus, took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. So again, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now let's join together in the Lord's Prayer and it's led this week by the Darst family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace this day and always. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. May God the Creator strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved fill you. And the Holy Spirit the Comforter keep you in peace. Amen. And now we have our closing song, Mighty to Save led by Barb Mork.
Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.